If you're involved in hiring today, you're probably aware of the benefits of diversity. Studies show diverse teams are more productive, more innovative, and generate better financial returns. But there's many challenges to building diverse teams, and a lot of times the focus is on sourcing, building more diverse candidate pools, and that's certainly part of it. But I believe the greatest obstacle is not how we source candidates, but how we evaluate the ones we've got. When it comes to diversity in hiring, especially racial diversity, if we're being honest, to make meaningful progress, we have to somehow overcome the fact that educational opportunity and employment opportunity have historically not been evenly distributed. This means that some people have had more access to opportunities to get work experience. And when you place work experience front and center in your hiring decisions, you eliminate many high potential applicants from ever getting their foot in the door. If you look at how we hire, instead of looking for ways to diminish the impact of this fact, we've put it front and center in the hiring process. And the real culprit here, the villain, is the resume and its place at the top of the hiring funnel. The resume is the single biggest blocker to improving diversity because the resume enshrines these two variables, educational attainment and previous work experience, and amplifies their importance by reinforcing them as the key gating criteria for employment. You hear this statistic all the time that recruiters spend an average of only seven seconds reading a resume, as if that's unfair to applicants. My perspective is the opposite. When I hear that, my first thought is, that's seven seconds of that poor recruiter's life they won't ever get back. And a lot of problems arise for applicants in those seven seconds too. Think about what you get from a resume in seven seconds. You get a name, a sense of education, and a glimpse of previous work experience. And if you're concerned about leaks in your hiring process that let bias creep in, that's three pretty big problems in seven seconds. Let's start with name. In a landmark study showing the impact of unconscious bias, researchers showed that changing the names on resumes from stereotypically black sounding names to white sounding names had dramatic impact on the callback rates. And this study really opened our eyes to the impact of unconscious bias in hiring. And once you get past name, it gets even worse. Looking at educational pedigree has terrible adverse impact. If you require a four-year degree, for example, for a job, you're faced with the fact that white people are two and a half times as likely to have a four-year degree as people of color. This, together with the fact that research shows that educational level is a pretty weak signal for predicting job performance, is why many top employers have dropped degree requirements altogether. And focusing on experience is kind of the same story, a relatively weak signal combined with terrible adverse impact because underrepresented communities haven't had the same access to gain that job experience. So when it comes to the war for diverse talent, if resumes are at the center of your hiring process, you're taking a knife to a gunfight. Resumes are fundamentally backward looking. They reflect opportunities you've had in the past instead of predicting what you're capable of in the future. Can we just get rid of resumes? Well, probably not, but we can limit their impact we can get past their shortcomings, and we need to. Because as long as the resume has primacy of place at the center of the modern hiring economy, we're gonna struggle with diversity. So to build diverse, high-performing teams, focus on stronger talent signals that are forward-looking, not weak, backward-looking ones, as that will only get you more of what you had in the past.